I would like to call the regular meeting of the Planning Commission to order at 6.04. I would like to call upon uh, Mr. Jimenez. Will you help us please, Commissioner, with the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Please stand. The right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Planning Secretary, may we have a roll call, please? Good evening, Commissioners. Commissioner Flores? Present. Commissioner Jimenez? Present. Commissioner Mora? Present. Vice Chair Ayala? Chair Carvajal? Present. All present. Thank you. Ex parte communications. This section is intended to allow all officials the opportunity to reveal any disclosures regarding site visits or ex parte communications about public hearings. Are there any ex parte uh, communications starting with Commissioner Flores? None. Commissioner Jimenez? None. Commissioner Mora? I have none. Commissioner Ayala? And myself, none. Thank you so much. Uh, public comments. Okay, no, I got that. Sorry. At this time, the general public may address the planning commission on both non-agenda and agenda items. Please be aware that the maximum time. Wait a minute. I think my paperwork got cut. Uh, no, here we go. A lot of members to the public to speak shall not exceed three minutes per speaker. State law prohibits the planning commission from taking action or entertaining extended discussion on a topic not listed on the agenda. Please show courtesy to others and direct all or your comments to the chairperson. Planning secretary, do we have any members of the public present that wish to speak today? Not at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, I will close, close public comment and move on to the next item. Public hearing number one, public hearing con continued from September 11th, 2023. Zone determination ZD case number 2023-01 to determine that a battery energy storage system with direct connection to a public utility grid is a similar and compatible use with other similarly prin principally permitted uses listed in the ML limited manufacturing zone and adopting a notice of exemption under CEQA section 15061B3, common sense exemption, grid store LLC. Um, Alejandro, before you begin, I do apologize. I just wanna address Mr. Ishii who is on the phone and raised his hand. Uh, Mr. Ishii, you'll be allowed to speak in item number two when your item is presented, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Am I on? There we go. Good evening, commissioners. This item was continued at the most recent PC meeting on September 11, 2023. At that meeting, the PC opened the public hearing and therefore allowed for public comment. In that time, staff has received comment from both the applicant grid store and as well uh, today received six signed letters from residents emphasizing the need for analyzing any potential risk for the project. Uh, with this information, it is staff's recommendation to receive public comment today and to continue the item to the November 13, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. Do I need to do any motion or just continue? Good evening, Mr. Jackson. If you could state, of course, your name, uh, residence, city of residence, and be advised you have three minutes. Sure. My name is Jackson McNeil. I'm a land use attorney from Elkins Cult, representing Bridgeland Resources. Um, I understand staff's recommendation to continue the item, and my client supports the continuance. So I'm going to save any substantive comments for when this item is presumably heard on November 13th. Um, you know, we express our concerns, we reiterate those, and we look forward to providing additional comment uh, next month. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Do we have any other speakers? Not on this. The applicant is present and I don't know if they want to say a couple words, yeah. Good evening, commissioners. Um, you have Brian Schock here, director of development for Grid Store. Um, just want to kind of reiterate, um, we did provide a response letter, um, like Alejandro mentioned. I think we're confident still that that addresses the concerns that were raised up both in the letter um, and in, in the community um, letters that we received just today. Um, we look forward to the response and um, hope that we can work towards a resolution here before next month. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'd like to at this time entertain a motion for continuance of this item to November 13. May I have a motion, please? I'll move we continue. Commissioner Mora, may I have a second? I'll second. Mara Yelda, uh, Planning Secretary, roll call vote. Commissioner Flores? Aye. Commissioner Jimenez? Aye. Commissioner Mora? Aye. Vice Chair Ayala? Aye. Chair Carbajal? Aye. Continuance passes 5 0. And do we need to hear from our attorney on anything from this? Uh, actually, no, you don't. I think you're good since you continued this item. There's no action that's been taken. Thank you, ma'am. So we go to old business. Uh, number two, Parkway tree removal appeal, appeal decision, resident request for removal of Parkway tree at 10318 Harvest Avenue. Recommendation that the Planning Commission one, reaffirm the decision of the Director of Public Works to, the, to deny the request of the property owner to have the city remove the Parkway tree in front of 10316 Harvest Avenue. Number two, deny the property owner at 10318 Harvest Avenue a permit to remove the parkway tree at his or own expense. I'd like to call upon Director of Public Works, James Enriquez, to uh, represent, to present, excuse me, item number two. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And, uh... I'm members of the commission. Um, is there a presentation that was given to you? Well, the item before you for your consideration is the appeal of a parkway tree removal um, at the stated address, 10318 Harvest Avenue. I've got some information, some, some of the details of the reason why it was uh, denied. Uh, in terms of process, we received the application June 29th of this year. Uh, the resident submitted a removal request uh, stating that the tree is causing damage to the sidewalk and roots are damaging the sewer lines. Uh, also, the tree drops uh, flowers, which get everywhere and make a mess. Uh, seeds uh, drop on the grass in areas and sprout new trees. On July of 18th uh, of this year, they received a uh, denial uh, letter uh, and then shortly after that uh, we received the, the applicant's request for an appeal to the planning commission which brings us here tonight um, the tree is a, a chinese flame uh, tree and it is designated in our uh, master plan and so it is appropriate for that location uh, quick review of what the criteria is for removal deals with uh, dead, drying, dying trees, usually diseased or in insect infested, uh, trees that pose a danger for a couple of different reasons as stated there, um, and uh, trees that don't conform to our master tree plan. In terms of dangerous, uh, what our policy defines dangerous is a tree whose limbs are growing into power lines and can't be trimmed uh, safely, a tree that is leaning to the point where it's unstable, a tree that uh, is experience, experience extensive root pruning and that has made it unstable. A tree that is blocking uh, a traffic control device and can't be trimmed uh, safely, or a tree that presents hazard to the general public, causing liability. Um, in terms of the criteria for damaging certain structures, it includes sidewalks, uh, curbs, and, and 
the like. And the test is to whether it uh, exceeds the cost of the value of the tree uh, as appraised exceeds the cost of the, of the repair of the damage. Or actually the other way around, if the damage exceeds the appraised value. Um, in terms of damage to sewer, uh, the policy is to require three uh, invoices from a plumber uh, within a 12 month period. Uh, stating that uh, the tree is actually causing root intrusion to the sewer. In terms of this particular case, uh, as we see here, we've uh, applied each of those uh, criteria and uh, uh, this particular tree just does not meet any of those uh, thresholds. A couple of pictures of the tree. Um, in terms of posing a danger as well, we've tested each of those criteria and, and we've also found that it does not meet the criteria for, for removal. Again, did not meet the criteria for removal. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any more questions, uh, but uh, we are recommending to the commission that uh, the commission reaffirm the decision to uh, deny the request of the re tree removal um, and also, uh, and then consider allowing the owner uh, to uh, pull a permit for removal of the tree at the owner's expense. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for this item? Go ahead, Commissioner. Has the resident provided uh, the three invoices from the um, three different plumbing companies? Not, not to my knowledge. Um, and part of his um, appeal process, he was talking about debris or heavy debris on the on his roof. Was uh, that confirmed? Um, that, that's not one of the criteria for removal. Um, so we, we didn't confirm whether or not the tree was producing debris. The, the recent picture that was uh, that's that's a recent picture where the green of the sidewalk has been taken care of. I'm I'm not sure when those pictures were taken, but we did inspect the the sidewalk and. Uh, the public works staff deemed that there was not currently a trip hazard there. So not a trip hazard, you're saying? There currently is not. It, it's been grinded down. I don't know when it was grinded down, but it, there currently is not a, a trip hazard. Can and we... this tree on harvest, is it protected? Is this one of the trees that is a protected tree or not? Because um, there are, no, okay. Because there are some trees in our city that are protected by the state. That we can't do things. Oh, with. no, it's not one of those, but it is on our, our master plan as a, a appropriate tree for that particular location. Can I see the picture again, please? Commissioner Flores, any questions, sir? Oh, how you doing, Derek? Um, how are we in terms of our pre farm initiative? Are we meeting our goals with the tree master plan? Because it seems like we've been getting tree removal requests, and I just want to know, are we hitting our target as far as tree farm uh, initiatives? I don't have that information with me tonight, so I'd have to report back on that. Okay. But was this the picture you were referring to? Yes, I was just trying to, you know, based off of the comment that um, the resident stated about debris on the roof, I just wanted to see, looking at the picture. If... I don't believe we have a picture that shows that. That tree's right in front of his house, right? Yeah, so it would, it would yeah, it's, it's right over the side. Yeah. It's not over the sidewalk, not over the roof. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, so um, from what I noticed is we've been letting a lot of uh, property owners remove their trees at their own expense. Are they, do they have to put up another tree when they remove it? Just because, like what Commissioner Flores is saying, it seems like a lot of people are, you know, tearing down want to take down the trees, but are they obligated to put in another tree at that spot? I believe the policy does require replacement uh, of the tree unless it's specifically, uh, the decision is specifically to uh, uh, forego the, the replacement. And, and are we reinforcing that? Are we going back to, to see if they are planting another tree? I'd have to go back to look at previous cases to, to get that data. 
I would like to see oh, that come like back so the commissioners can know if we are actually doing that. And also, again, with if we're meeting the numbers on the trees as well, if that can be brought back as well. Um, is the applicant here? I'd like to call upon the applicant if they wish to speak. I believe you said he was on electronically. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, the applicant is available via Zoom. I will allow him to enter. Thank you. Mr. Ishii, please unmute and address the Planning Commission. If you can state your name and city of residence for the record and address the Planning Commission. Again, you have three minutes. Mr. Ishii? Having some problems. Is he unmuted? Yeah, he's unmuted. Mr. Ray Ishii? Or can we move to the next item and then come back? Gentlemen, I know. Come on the application so we could call in and tell him that some talk. There's the phone number provided here. While you're doing that, can we move to co the consent agenda? Just in for time. Definitely, Madam Chair. Let me mute him at this point in time. All items under the consent agenda calendar are considered to be routine. Any items a planning commissioner wishes to discuss should be designated at this time. All other items may be approved in a single motion. Such approval will also waive the reading of any ordinance. Uh, minutes, we have minutes of the March 13 regular planning commission. We are going to remove the conditional use permit, CUP case number 5425, a compliance review of a church use at 12227 Florence Avenue within the M2PD heavy manufacturing planning development zone, which is Calvary Chapel, Santa Fe Springs. We're going to remove conditional use permit case number 775-3, a compliance review direct transfer facility at 12739 Lakeland Road within the M2 heavy manufacturing zone, CRNRE. We're gonna keep uh, item number four on there. We'll keep item Conditional use permit, the next one of case 792-1. Then we are going to remove the last one, additional use permit, case number 797-2, a compliance review of an indoor badminton facility at 11323 Shoemaker Avenue within the M1PD Light Manufacturing Plan Development Zone, Santa Fe Spring Badminton Cup. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Teresa, you want to at least for the record, state why those items are being removed and will be heard at the next meeting, please. Um, it was brought to our attention recently before the Planning Commission that these items were not routed to other city departments for their consideration. Um, so we're removing these items at this moment and will be brought before you at the November 13th meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Teresa. May I have a motion, please? A motion. Commissioner Ayala, may I have a I'll second? second? Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Commissioner Jimenez, excuse me. Planning Secretary, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Flores? Aye. Commissioner Jimenez? Aye. Commissioner Mora? Aye. Vice Chair Ayala? Aye. Chair Carbajal? Aye. Five zero passes. So ordered. City Attorney, please. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. The commission's action on this item shall become effective 14 days after receipt by the applicant of written notice of the commission's action. The applicant and or other interested party may file an appeal of the commission's action to the city council. The appeal must be in writing and filed with the city clerk within the previously mentioned 14 day period. Thank you so much. Were we able to reach him? Okay, we've done that before. Um, bring the mic to the phone, please. Hello. Good evening, sir. May I have may I have you state your name, city of residence, and then please be advised you have three minutes. Okay. Um, good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Ray. I live on one oh three one eight Harvest Avenue, Santa Fe Spring. And basically um here for my appeal. Um I guess I was denied by the public works. Um but basically um it's not so much um, I'm meeting any of the criteria, but I feel that tree is just a big use to me, and it's a very messy tree, and it's basically it's just messy. And the uh, seeds that fall off the tree um, basically attract all of these bugs. And I originally had put in there on my appeal that there were box cell bugs. They're not box cell bugs. Basically, they're they're generally just there are bugs. Um, they, they take over everything. They, they're in my backyard. I don't even have the tree in my backyard, but the leaves, the flowers, the seeds end up being in my backyard. Um, I'm infested with these jazera bugs. Um, the city has come out before, because my neighbor had called um, to come out and spray, and they sprayed a while back, and that's only in the front, but not in the back. In the back, um, I don't want them to be spraying any kind of pesticide, because I do have a dog, and, and I don't spray any kind of pesticide in the backyard. Um, so my whole request is is not so much for the city to remove the tree, for, but just give me the permit for me to remove the tree. It won't cost the city any money. I'll pay for everything out of my own pocket. Um, even if um, even if I have to pay for the permit, I will pay for the permit. So you know that's all I'm asking is just permission to remove the tree. As far as the parkway in itself, from the picture, as you can see, it's just dirt right now. But because um, I'm planning to do um, like a drought with resistant landscaping in the front of the park, uh, on the parkway in front of the house, and also in, in the front yard. So um, basically, that's kind of the tree is kind of holding up my plans for that. Um, if I'm allowed to remove the tree, I will replace it with um, drought resistant tolerance. Um, plants, um, and that's basically it. But thank you for letting me speak. I I have a question. If I understood correctly, it isn't that the tree is damaging the sewer. It's uplifting the sidewalk. It's just that it's a messy tree. That's what I heard from the conversation. Did I hear that correctly? Well, that. That's correct, but it is it is lifting up the side side sidewalk a little bit, and then by that picture you can see that it, is, it has been grounded down. I don't know when it was grounded down, but it is as you can see it. Well, not maybe from the picture, but if you were actually there, you would see that it is pushing this um, the sidewalk up a little bit. Um, as far as any kind of intrusion into the sewer line or anything like that. Um, well, in front of my house, I, I had this, this a couple of months ago, I had a, a planter built in front of the house, which is about, oh, I would say they a foot and a half, two feet from the front of the house. They had to dig probably a good 12 inches for the footing, to put the, um, the bricks at the footing, 
Well, while they were digging the trench, there there were roots about two and a half to three inches coming from the tree that's heading towards basically my foundation and in the direction of where my sewer line is. So eventually, I would say that it would start to get into my sewer line. I've heard other people have that kind of issue. Um, they still have their tree. They just deal with it. But, you know, I'm... I've been in this. I've lived in this house since 1985. Um, I've been retired for five years now, and I just don't want to have to deal with that type of stuff anymore. I'm just getting too old and too tired to be able to to deal with the mess that the tree keeps causing. And you know, it's 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 clogging up my um, my uh, my gutters, and it's kind of you know. I, I don't want to be climbing up on the ladder to go ahead and clean the gutters you know, every time this thing gets clogged up. So my whole request is just give me a permission. Okay, thank you, sir. I do have a question for you, for our director. If we can see the slides again, the pictures. And then when was the last time that that tree was, um, was it pruned? Trim. No. Um, so I, I don't have that information with me. I, I would have to uh, come back with that information about when the last time it was trimmed. My other question is the resident stated that he wants to put drought tolerant in the front of his yard and here this is city property correct he would need to go, because it's in the in the right of way he would still need to get in the parkway excuse me he would still need to get permission from from public works because they govern what can be planted within the within the parkway area including what type of tree can be planted there as well, if I'm not mistaken, there's also a certain amount of percentage that can be done on drought tolerant on their property as well. You can't do the whole thing. I would need to, I, I would need to go back and look at that, but I know there's a percentage of materials that's allowed within the, the parkway area. So before he plants anything there, he would need to first get all permission for it. Because one of the things that you don't want is, even if it's not drought tolerant, it's some type of, of tall material so that when somebody is backing out from the driveway, it obstructs their view. So we would need to make sure whatever is planted meets our requirement. Go ahead, Commissioner. I got another question. Um, is there any certain amount of time that they could leave their, their front yard without any grass? I mean, the on the city's property side. That's well, at some right. point it becomes a property maintenance issue, but I think it's been left like this. I'm assuming because, because the gentleman mentioned he has a, I guess, a bigger plan for that area and he's just waiting to resolve this before he, he moves forward. Okay. So then this also goes back, my last question on what uh, Commissioner Flores was saying. The resident is stating that he does not wish to plant a tree. So that's mm -hmm. one thing we have to look at as well um, on here. Are we gonna continue to do this? And if so, if we were to give him that permit, what are our numbers? What are we doing wrong? What needs to be done from here? In terms of the replacement of the tree? If he's 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 outright stating no, that he's not gonna replace it. So that goes, excuse me, Commissioner Ayala's point. Are we following up on this, on all these trees that Commissioner Jimenez was stating that people are coming forward asking to remove them? I, I can report back at a at a subsequent meeting about uh, yeah I, how, I think how many that, have been removed and not replaced. I think that's very important, and um, once we get that information, I, I would like to to have us follow up and and you know withhold that 
ordinance, um, you know, the trees in this community is what make Santa Fe Springs beautiful. And if we continue to remove these trees and not follow up with the replacement of them, it's gonna be just another bare city. So I would like that information and I also would like to find out how are we gonna follow up with that. I do have a question for the resident. Um, I know you mentioned that your, one of your concerns is the, the rising of your foundation. Um, I'm looking at a recent Google map picture and I see that you've recently planted a palm tree, which palm trees are known for also, also raising foundation. This palm tree is, was planted right next to your home. So was that not a concern at the time? Mr. Ishii is no longer with us um, via phone call. I unfortunately can't address that question to him directly. So because we have all these questions, should we still take action or are we going to and, continue to next? Sorry, and then one more thing, if you, we may have to wait till next month. Correct. But if you also uh, find out, I know that if we're gonna, if we were to remove a tree, we should plant a tree. That's, I mean, you know, we've been over for the city of parks and they do a lot of good also. And then he mentioned an infestation with bugs. Uh, any others, and if you find out if any other neighbors have reported a bug infestation because of that tree? Or uh, not to my knowledge, but our, our arborist did go out to assess this tree <laughs> and that's part of the health assessment. And there was nothing indicated as far as- So it's not diseased. It's, it's not, not diseased. diseased. He, he may be referring to, you know, bees flying around the tree Mm -hmm. That doesn't affect the yeah. health of the tree. In fact, it's it's good for the tree. So I think on this one we do continue till the next meeting, till November eleventh, when you come back with that information. Excuse me, November thirteenth. Go ahead, Commissioner. And also, I I just like to get clarification. So if the trees removed at the homeowner's expense, and then a tree's replaced at the homeowner's expense. Um, we would like the planning and uh, public works to identify what type of tree is conforming to our city um, tree master plan. So if he does agree to it, it's got to be within that realm. So it stays within the identity of our community. We'll, we'll take a look, but I believe the way that was adopted, it was specific trees for specific streets. So they were all uniform. So it'd probably be the same tree. It'd just be a new, a new tree. Go ahead, sir. Did you have anything? May I, I'd like to, we can have one of the commissioners entertain a motion for continue on this item for November 13th and also bring brought the information that we've asked. I'll move. Commissioner Flores, may I have a second? Second. Commissioner Mora, planning secretary, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Flores? Aye. Commissioner Jimenez? Aye. Commissioner Mora? Aye. Vice Chair Yella? Aye. Chair Carbajal? Aye. I have zero to continue this matter to November 3rd. Thank you. On to staff announcements. Each, anything else? You're doing a fabulous job. <laughs> Claudia? None at this time. Teresa, anything? Nothing to report, Madam Chair. Sir? Nothing to report, Madam. Fabulous. Okay. Commissioner comments. Uh, AB 1234, Council Conference reporting. Who had that? Okay. So no one has that. Commissioner Flores, any comments? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to welcome the public works director. We, we haven't met you, but uh, welcome to our city. Commissioner Jimenez. Yes, welcome. Nice to have you aboard. And uh, go Dodgers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that. But... Commissioner Ayala. No, uh, same. Uh, welcome. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I really like the fact that, um, you know, we continue to obviously be a, um, a business friendly um, committee, but also, you know, a resident friendly committee. Uh, we are known for our parks, for our trees. Um, and I think we need to stand firm on those decisions. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Mora. 
agree with uh, our all the commissioners up here as well as welcome. Uh, heard a lot of good things about you and welcome aboard. And just a couple things, uh, Coffee with a Cop took place last Wednesday. Uh, it was a great up chance for the uh, residents to meet directly with uh, their patrolling officers as well as the captain and, uh, and the chief. And uh, Kathy Fink is gone, but the Chamber of Commerce is alive and well. I think there was a five ribbon cuttings that we had uh, last month. So things are happening. Can't wait for Sonic, Canes and Chick-fil-A, and there's a couple others opening up. So yeah. it's going to be chicken to out, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And I'd also um, like to welcome you as well, Mr. Enriquez. We look forward to working with you. And um, we're all a good family here. We are, like our commissioner said, cater to our business and our residents by making sure that we keep the, as we say, the bar up high in Santa Fe Springs. I'd like to thank um, Director Wayne Morrell for Sonic being graded. You have went through hell and back, I'll say it. And sir, I have the utmost respect for you and your job for you and your department. And this is just the example of your leadership pushing through and making things done. Thank you. And then also with Commissioner Mora, I attended a chamber mixer at La Jara and everything is going strong with them too. So it's pretty good. Um, and also if any of the commissioners have any suggestions, we're going through Art Fest for next year, the entertainment. Commissioner Jimenez and I met um, with city staff today on who we'd like. So if there's any more, I know you gave us some, um, if there's any bands you'd like to see or whatever, because we're pushing ahead. This is going to be our 10th year for Art Fest to bring in the arts to our residents. So that's really good. So I hope we all have a great night. You can see your Dodgers, see the Raiders. I don't know what else, but let's enjoy our evening. And I move to adjourn this meeting at 640.